Welcome back to Pennsylvania Outdoor Life. We're talking bear, and of course, we're talking about trapping bears and learning more about them. This year, the Pennsylvania Game Commission in our area trapped bears on Game Lands 13 and one in Monroe County. But we're going to go back to Game Lands 57, where Kevin Winter is going to process some more bear. So the tag, the tooth, the temperature, the sex. What's next? Tattoo. So we always ear tag the or uh, tattoo the lower ear tag number onto the upper lip of the bear. In case he loses uh, both of the tags. Right, so it's pretty common for us to uh, handle a bear in the future where you can see small tears on the ears or the ears are sort of slightly deformed where the tags would have been. And um, the tattoo is always a, a go-to. So you look for a tattoo. If, it, if the bear had been tattooed, you can still identify which particular bear it was. So. So when they bring a hunter brings a bear to a check station, even though they may not have tags in the ears, uh, we make it a practice to look at every bear's upper lip, upper lip and just make sure there's not a tattoo. Gotcha. Processing the bear is Mackenzie Taylor. Uh, she's one of the Game Commission interns for the summer. And um, we have <coughs> Game Warden Aaron Morrow, uh, covers Wyoming County. Okay. Uh, he's assisting us on the bear research this week. And uh, this is his Game Warden district. so. These bears count toward a, a, a trapping objective that, that each warden has on an annual basis. Okay. Uh, Butch Gorko, and uh, Butch is one of the deputies here in Wyoming County. Lauren Maxwell, she's our wildlife health technician, and uh, she's part of the Wildlife Futures Program, which is a collaborative agreement between University of Pennsylvania and, and the Game Commission uh, to increase our wildlife surveillance program, health surveillance program, right, yep. and monitor wildlife diseases much more closely. Cool. And of course, one of our Pennsylvania Outdoor Life field staff members, Dale Butler, he's been your volunteer yeah. for a while, right? Oh yeah, yeah, he's a great volunteer. We love having him along and putting him to work. Now we're hearing about five and 600 pound dumpster diving bears in cities and towns. What's a good sized bear in the middle of the woods like this? Yeah, so we're in a remote area. Well, we're, we're on part of a complex that's 100,000 acres or better. And, um, you know, up here, they don't necessarily get exposed to a lot of the supplemental foods that bears do in our more civilized areas. So up here, they're relying right now on the blueberries and the cherries that are available. Uh, there's a pretty good apple crop the way it looks right now. And um, it looks like we might actually get a decent beach crop. So there should be some good beech nuts here in the fall. Weight-wise, what are you thinking about a good average bear that you'd be trapping around here? Uh, I mean, I, I would say the average bear that we're going to catch up here is going to be somewhere between 100 to 150 pounds. Wow. Uh, larger males that we sometimes catch up here might be 300 or 350, but that's sort of the, the large bears. You know, if you, you think about it up here in these remote areas, uh, they don't have access to all the supplemental foods that bears in other areas do. The, the bird feeders, um, you know, dumpsters or... Uh, cornfields and all that other uh, supplemental food that's provided in closer proximity to our activities as humans. You just hook that up. Okay. In pounds, guys. Two ten. Two ten. Blood is taken from the bear for research purposes, and it's time to reset the trap and wake up the bear. That works. <laughs> as they're re as they're rebaiting and resetting this trap, Kevin's going to put this uh, reversal in now. How do you wake it up? Uh, so one of the drugs, ketamine, unfortunately there's no reversal. So we have to wait a certain period of time before we reverse the other drug, which is xylazine. Uh, that's sort of a muscle relaxer. We're gonna reverse that. And uh, within five to 10 minutes, the bear will start to slowly come around um, and you'll see its front end will, will come back to it uh, faster than its rear end. So it might sort of crawl away or start to to try to get up in its front end, but its back end will be kind of dragging behind. And eventually they they just, uh, it works its way through their circulatory system and, and the bear's back to normal. The bear slowly comes to and does just what Kevin said it would. Come on, let's go, get going. Come on, you can get going. Come on, let's go.
and the team packs up and heads to another trap, where we found one more bear for the day. Exactly what do you hope to gather from a tagged bear like this? Sure, so the information that we typically get back from tagged bears is either when the bear is harvested during one of our uh, fall hunting seasons, or if the bear's caught in future years, uh, we, we see that that bear uh, existed in the population to that period of time, and uh, we get that kind of that recapture or that harvest data that's so critical to help monitor the population. So you've been doing this for years. How is our bear population in these woods? Yeah, so our, our bear population is, is very healthy here in Northeast PA. We've got an excellent uh, uh, hunting opportunities and, and very robust bear population. Um, some of the more recent hunting seasons were put in place to help uh, somewhat reduce that population in ways that it would reduce the amount of complaints and uh, human wild and bear related conflict that we had in some of our urban areas. Uh, so this tagging and monitoring is important in sort of gauging how those increased hunting opportunities are impacting the overall population and uh, if it's in fact, you know, helping us reach the bear management goals that we want to have here in Pennsylvania. Last week uh, you were out on Game Lands 13. Overall, how was that trapping adventure? Not bad. We ended up with 12 captures. Um, you know, we had a couple of bears that did evidence some mange. We treated them uh, because they were mild cases. Uh, but overall, uh, the biggest bear we had there was 293. Um, generally speaking, they were very healthy and, and uh, hopefully we'll have a good capture event here on Game Lens 57 also. Thank you for the invite, Kevin. It's always interesting. It's always neat to get your hands on a black bear. Not a lot of opportunity there, but you have a lot of opportunity to harvest a bear. Archery season, early muzzleloader season. You've got the early rifle for youth and, and um, senior citizens, and you've got the regular season, which is expanded. So many opportunities for hunters to harvest a black bear. For more information, go to the Pennsylvania Game Commission website we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. <laughs>